at what was accomplished during the meetings, I spoke to Anthony Chan. He's the chief economist for J.P. Morgan Chase's private client division. I think over the last two weeks, uh, the Chinese government realizes they have some real challenges. The economy is obviously slowing down, but to a pace uh, of somewhere around uh, 7 percent, which would be the envy of other parts of the world like the United States. Uh, but in this kind of an environment where they really have to balance or juggle a lot of balls, it is a challenge. On the one hand, they want to conduct reform. They want to do financial reform. They want to be doing structural reform. And at the same time, they don't want the economy to slip. I think it was really interesting that they maintained the employment target of 10 million uh, jobs being created while at the same time slowing a bit the, uh, the economic growth rate. So I think they're going to really stick to it and they're going to do everything they can to come as close as possible to that 7% growth target. But is that realistic to you to have the 7% and also the jobs number as a target? I think that the uh, jobs uh, target uh, is a bit aggressive, but given the fact that last year uh, they exceeded the job target by over 3 million jobs, uh, if they have a jobs target of 10 million and they hit 10 million with uh, 7 million, it should not come as a real big surprise. I don't think uh, that they'll create 13 million jobs, and I don't think it'll be as easy uh, to hit the target this year as it was last year, but I think it's doable. A lot of people talk about interest rate liberalization, and I know it's a fancy word to sort of say basically free markets in terms of interest rates, but for our international audience, why is that, why is that important? Well, I think it's important because if they all of a sudden start to uh, have the financial institutions remove some of those deposit interest rate ceilings, and these financial institutions have to compete for money, I think it starts to put a little bit of pressure on the market to be a little bit more efficient. And at the same time, uh, it actually better reflects uh, uh, the state of uh, economic conditions in the overall economy when you remove these uh, ceilings or barriers that, uh, that have been imposed in the past. And we're only going to move in that direction. I don't think they're going to remove them entirely. One of the things that we all like to do is obsessed with numbers, the 7% number we've obsessed with now for a couple of weeks. Help us out here. Is it that big of a deal that the 7% number is attained, whether it's 6.9 or 7 or 7.1? What difference does it really make to the sort of international markets? I really don't think it makes a real uh, big difference, uh, whether it's 6.9 or 7%. But given the fact that this is the first year where they've moved it down to 7%, I think it's important uh, that the Chinese government make all efforts uh, to, to try to meet it. I think if they were to slip below 7% uh, in year two or in year three, that's, a, that's totally different from slipping below 7% on year one when they've just changed a target. So I think I take uh, Lee Kui Chang at his word that they're going to do everything uh, that they can uh, that is possible to, to meet their target. And I think that we will see more stimulus. I think we'll see another uh, series of uh, monetary easing moves, whether that be lowering the reserve requirement ratios, which I think is going to happen, and even lower the interest rate uh, that I think is also going to happen. And we might see more than one interest rate cut this year, all in an effort to, to make sure that they meet that 7% growth target or come very close to it. Here in the U.S., we're talking about potentially raising rates sometime in the middle of this year or towards the end of this year. Nonetheless, we're talking about raising rates potentially. How does that impact you if you're sitting somewhere in Guangzhou or Shanghai or, or Beijing? Why should they care? Well, I think that it's actually a positive uh, development because sometimes the Federal Reserve raises rates because they're behind the curve and inflationary pressures are taking hold. Research that I've done finds that whenever that happens, it's usually not good for financial markets, specifically the equity market. But when they raise rates because the economy is getting better and inflation is still a no-show, that's actually a, a pretty positive development for financial markets. So whether you're sitting in Guangzhou, whether you're sitting in Paris, if you see a central bank that is raising rates because the economy is getting better, be that the United States or any other central bank around the world, that's a positive development. And then you put on top of that that the central bank is going to be very careful. Notice how, how careful the central bank has been about the language. Do they remove the, the word patience uh, from the forward language? Uh, does that mean that they raise rates right away? They're being very, very careful because remember that they kept interest rates low for many, many years, and they certainly don't want to do anything to upset uh, the, uh, the, the apple cart or certainly 
uh, run the risk uh, in any direction that uh, would cause this economic expansion to falter. So I think it's a positive development, and I'm actually very excited that they're raising rates for the right reasons rather than because they're behind the curve on inflation in the United States.